So on the tangent ones, same kind of idea, but you guys notice there's two tangent functions, right? For the tangent function, um, we have 1 minus cosine of, th of theta divided by sine of theta, or sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. So my recommendation, I usually use the first one where it has a monomial in the denominator, and then um, go from there. Now again, there is no plus or minus, so we don't need to worry about this. But we know that if we're using our half angles, then we've got to figure out what theta is. So we multiply by 2 on both sides, and we get pi over 4. Right? So kind of the same process that we've been doing over here. So let's plug in the half angle formula for tangent, one of them, which would be 1 minus the cosine of theta all over sine of theta. So again, guys, if we're going to let the half angle be pi over 8, that means theta is pi over 4. So basically, I have 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. Now this one kind of gets a little fun. You can multiply by the reciprocal. I'm just going to do one at a time. I see, again, a complex fraction. I say, you know what? Let me just get rid of these radicals, or the denominators. So by applying the distributive property here, I get 2 minus the square root of 2 all over square root of 2. Now I will go ahead and rationalize my denominator. And now I get, again, apply the distributive property, 2 square root of 2 minus 2 all over 2. And remember, guys, the 2 doesn't divide out. That 2 divides into both of those terms. So therefore, we're left with the square root of 2 minus 1. Okay, It's not the precalculus that gets people. It's the arithmetic stuff 